Some people say we need to go searching if we are to find the holy way and the holy one. Others claim God is right there before our eyes and right here within our hearts. Maybe it just takes some intention and some paying attention for the invisible to become visible. Scripture says, for nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. In this Lenten time of lengthening days, may we open ourselves to the signs and wonders around and within. May we emerge from the darker places and the darker parts of our lives, confessing our sins and returning toward God's way. May we know our lives and our life together to contain common encounters which reflect celestial light. Dear God, we come before you as a community who has welcomed people of all sexual orientations, gender orientations, and expressions, and other folk who society labels as diverse. This we have done for years, but today we come as a community who have walked through the doorway of affirmation. We seek to be public, intentional, and explicit about that affirmation. Yet, at every turn, we tend toward the private, not the public. We tend toward the opportunistic, not the intentional. We tend toward the implied stance, not the explicit affirmation. May we take hold of your promise that you are the God who comes alongside us, walks with us on the journey toward greater affirmation in public, intentional, and explicit ways. You are the paraclete, the God who comes alongside. 
you are the God who pitched their tent amongst us. As you came alongside your disciples on the road to Emmaus, we take heart, we take courage from your promise to accompany us all. We are not alone. Hi, and welcome to Learning Together for Sunday, March 14th, otherwise known as Pi Day. Today we eat pie to celebrate the full inclusion of LGBTQIA plus and two-spirit people fully and intentionally into communities of faith in Canada and beyond. In honor of Pi Day, I wanted to talk a little bit about how the symbols on in our worship center all speak to that value of inclusion. And so we begin with our candle, our light, that reminds us of the one who one time when he was asked who he was, he said, I am the light. And another time when he was asked, he told people, you are the light. It reminds us that every person born into this world carries within them that divine spark that little spark of light, the light of God. We have our wooden cross, and this cross also reminds us of the one who went all the way to the cross because he so believed in God's message of love for everyone. 
in all places. We have our heart to remind us that it's all about love. And it's not just about love for some people, it's about love for every person. We have our rainbow. And a rainbow is a very, very important symbol for the LGBTQ IA plus and two spirit people. I have two pictures I'd like to share with you that have rainbow images on them. One is a playground swing set that I just love because it tells people everyone is welcome here. It invites anyone who wants to play to come and play. The other picture I have, I'll move it a little bit closer. These are the values that are tied to the different colors of the rainbow. When you see the rainbow flag as a representation of the LGBTQIA plus and two spirit community. Values like spirit, harmony, nature, the connection with nature and who we are born to be naturally, sunlight, healing, life, inclusivity, and diversity. So that's our rainbow symbol. We have our fish symbol. And I think the fish symbol can be a poignant symbol for us when, when we mark Pi Day. I think that it reminds us that Jesus did not call us to fish for some people. Jesus called us to fish for all people. It also reminds us in the story of the people who had to be courageous for their faith that it hasn't always been safe, and it sometimes still isn't safe for people to be who they truly are. And so it's very important for our community to be intentional about letting people know that when they come to our church, they will be welcomed and accepted however they are. And so we hang the rainbow flag outside our church sort of in the same way that those early Christians drew a curve in the sand. People see that rainbow flag and they can walk in and know that they are going to find welcome and love. And finally, we have our stone, which reminds us that we build our beliefs around being public, intentional, and explicit about our support of people that are often marginalized. We build that belief on something that is as firm as a stone, an unshaking belief that we are called to love all people. So I'd like to finish our learning together time today with a video that was created by Corwin, who is a youth member of the Pacific Spirit United Church. And he created this vid video to remind everybody that love is love. So I invite you, if you have your piece of pie, I have mine that my daughter who works in a pie shop brought home for me. Let's share in our pie eating 
and watch Corwin's video. Peace be with you all. A reading from Genesis chapter 28 verses 10 to 19 in the Common English Version. Jacob left the town of Beersheba and started out for Haran. At sunset, he stopped for the night and went to sleep, resting his head on a large rock. In a dream, he saw a ladder that reached from earth to heaven and God's angels were going up and down on it. The Lord was standing beside the ladder and said, I am the Lord God who is worshiped by Abraham and Isaac. I will give to you and your family the land on which you are now sleeping. Your descendants will spread over the earth in all directions and will become as numerous as the specks of dust. Your family will be a blessing to all people. Wherever you go, I will watch over you. Then later, I will bring you back to this land. I won't leave you. I will do all I have promised. Jacob woke up suddenly and thought, the Lord is in this place, and I didn't even know it. Then Jacob became frightened and said, this is a fearsome place. It must be the house of God and the ladder to heaven. When Jacob got, got up early the next morning, he took the rock that he had used for a pillow and stood it up for a place of worship. Then he poured olive oil on the rock to dedicate it to God, and he named the place Bethel. Before that, it had been named Luz. This is a story of our faith. Well, in the name of Jesus, who promises to be with us always, I want to say grace and peace to you, to my beloved siblings at Shaughnessy Heights and at Pacific Spirit. It's such an honor to be invited to join with you, with both of you today in celebration of Pi Day. I've really enjoyed learning more about how the United Church of Canada celebrates Pi Day. I'd love to see disciples of Jesus celebrating inclusion for all people and and, you know, math puns are, are pretty cool, too. <laughs> um, I want to begin my message for you today by saying thank you for your commitment to being officially affirming churches. Thank you for being a couple of those churches that serves up pie on this pie day on 314 and every day. Thank you for being public and intentional and explicit about your commitment to make welcoming space for folks from the LGBTQ2SIA plus community. Now, that's a lot of letters, isn't it? But each of those letters represents siblings who are lovely, cre lovingly created in God's image, real people, real lives, and real experiences. And you know, for too many of us, those real experiences include difficult and traumatic encounters with faith communities. Yeah, that's a big part of my story and my life. A lot of people got to know me in the middle of the last year when I lost my job at the church that I've been serving since 2014. A couple of weeks before I was fired, I came out fully and publicly and proudly as a trans woman. I shared this message and I, I told my story in a way that, that not very many LGBTQ plus people of faith have been allowed to do. My hope was that even if my coming out sermon was the last one I'd ever get to preach, the words would inspire queer people, especially those with some connection to faith, in their journeys. 
that they would hear clearly and unapologetically from an ordained minister like me that they are loved by God and that God celebrates who they are. Now, I hoped also that others in the church would hear and be challenged to reevaluate and, and uh, all the ways that they have welcomed people with strings attached. Believe it or not, I actually wanted to make myself vulnerable to become a living reminder that LGBTQ plus acceptance is not simply a philosophical or mental debate like the nature of the Trinity or atonement theory or something like that. Those things are important, but we're real people. We go to church with you. We are in your pews, we're in your youth group, we're in your choir, and sometimes we're in your pulpits. Now, I once heard Abby Stein, a trans woman who was once a Hasidic Jewish rabbi, say that it's easy to hate an idea, but it's hard to hate a person. Now, for almost 20 years, before I became self-accepting, I had been hearing churches and denominations and seminaries say, we are just not ready to deal with this idea. Well, I am not an idea. And if spending a little bit of time in the public eye has meant that churches are going to have to have conversations that they've been putting off for way too long, well, that's an outcome I can welcome and I can celebrate. It has been pretty strange, though, and sometimes it's been stressful to come out and to transition with folks looking on. I can remember thinking as I was getting ready for a photo shoot on the day after I came out, this doesn't really feel like the way it's supposed to happen. One of the really interesting parts of coming out and transitioning publicly has been some of the feedback and the messages that I've gotten from people that I don't even know. With every article or TV news segment that came out, with every time some part of my story or one of my sermons has been shared on social media, there have been folks weighing in, sharing their opinions and reactions, filling up the comment sections. And I know wisdom suggests that you never read the comments, but I couldn't help myself sometimes. I've actually read quite a lot of them. And a lot of them, the vast majority of messages I receive are positive and supportive. I've heard from other queer clergy, some of whom are still in the closet themselves, and they've written me about how my story has inspired them and helped them. I've heard from lots of other trans people, people of faith and people who are not, just today, I got a message on Twitter from someone who said, you know, I'm not religious, but I feel a sense of peace and love when I watch your sermons. I love hearing those kinds of messages from people. But, spoiler alert, I guess, not all of the feedback, not everything that folks have been saying about me has been positive. Sadly, there are a lot of transphobic people out there, and that includes a lot of transphobic Christians who wrongly insist that their prejudice is somehow theologically or scripturally justified. Those folks and their opinions weren't all that hard to see coming. I knew they were out there. But I didn't know, or at least I didn't anticipate, that so many people would be weighing in with comments like, well, what did she expect? Or typical judgmental Christians, or she should have known that she wouldn't be accepted. A couple of weeks ago when I posted a video announcing that I'm going to be joining the, the ministry staff of the Metropolitan Community Church of Toronto, one very kind commenter said that they were sad that I had lost my job, but then they also said something about how they were not surprised. Maybe you've encountered this same type of thinking, friends. A lot of people out there do not realize that there are churches out there like Pacific Spirit and Shaughnessy Heights. They don't seem to know that there are faithful, sincere followers of Jesus, honest-to-goodness church-going Christians who are progressive, inclusive, and explicit about welcoming all people, regardless of orientation, regardless of identity. Somehow, in the broader court of public opinion, Christian has become synonymous with really conservative. And the Christians who often take the, up the most space, it seems like, who get the most attention are the ones who are the most conservative. The ones who read the Bible with a kind of wooden literalism. The ones who oppose efforts to make society more equitable and fair for the marginalized. And who often think and act as if their way of being Christian is the only real way to be Christian. 
I, I, I don't like this. I, I don't think you do either. I'm, I'm disgusted. In fact, when I, I hear Christians like U.S. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, and she says that she opposes LGBTQ plus rights on biblical grounds. But when we hear that about her, and it's bad enough that we hear that news, but what's worse, I think, is that when we hear that about her and her gross misuse of the Bible, it's just sort of assumed that she is somehow representative of Christianity more broadly. Meanwhile, the state of Georgia is also represented by Reverend Raphael Warnock, an ordained Baptist preacher, and his platform reads, in part, Reverend Warnock believes that our nation's commitment to equality is sacred and inviolable. That belief has led him to routinely advocate from the pulpit on behalf of the LGBTQ plus community. I'm not going to say too much about the politics of another country, but if you had to guess which of those two stances, which of those two seemingly opposite convictions that people associated with authentic Christianity, which one do you think it would be? Or maybe we could take the same idea and, and work it around into a different type of question. As churches that are unapologetically progressive, inclusive, and explicitly welcoming, do you ever feel like you're in the minority? Like somehow you're very different from other Christians around you. Do you ever feel like saying, yeah, I'm, I'm Christian, but I'm not that kind of Christian? Sometimes being the kind of Christian that celebrates Pi Day can feel pretty lonely. I've known plenty of progressive people of faith over the years who feel exactly that way. But you know that the people of God have been in places where they felt lonely before. The scripture is full of those kinds of stories, stories of pilgrims and stories of exiles and stories of mystics and rebels and prodigals and stories of wanderers. That's the sort of story that we have heard this morning, isn't it? Because there Jacob is, in a place that's between one place and another place, a place that is far enough out in the wilderness that when it's time to go to sleep, you just pick a spot on the ground, find a rock that's kind of passable as a pillow, and, and lie right there under the stars. He's all alone, Jacob is, out there between Beersheba and Haran, the story in Genesis tells us. At least that's what Jacob thinks, until he finally gets to sleep on that pillow made out of a rock, and that's how he feels until he begins to dream. And it is there, in his dreaming, in his vision of that ethereal ladder, the one that reaches between heaven and earth, that Jacob receives the good news that is there for every single one of us to receive, if we'll hear it, if we'll listen, if we'll take it to heart. You are not alone. You're not alone out here in this place, Jacob, because I am with you now, God says, and I will be with you wherever you go. And, and you know, when Jacob woke up, he was amazed. He was astounded to discover that out there in the midst of what must have felt like loneliness, he wasn't alone. Not, not at all. Surely, he says, probably excitedly rubbing the sleep from his eyes, surely God was in this place and I didn't know it. Surely I wasn't as alone as I thought I was. There's something about that story and something about the grace of presence when we think we're alone that feels fitting for a celebration like Pi Day. Because the truth is, people of faith like us are not alone. Recent studies suggest that whatever the prevailing narrative seems to suggest about the North American church, there are more of us than ever who would say, yes, I am a progressive and inclusive Christian. There are more of us than ever who would say, I am tired of feeling like my faith has been hijacked by hate. In fact, according to the Public Religion Research Institute, consistently progressive Christians outnumber consistently conservative Christians almost two to one. 
Now, those figures reflect research conducted down in the States, but my guess is the margins here in Canada would be similar, if not larger. Now, a lot of us may not know it, but we are not alone. We are far, far from alone, friends. And you know what? I believe that every time a church like yours gets vocal about who you are, about the progressive and inclusive brand of faith at the center of your life, in other words, when you get explicit about it, you bear witness in a way that shows others out there that they aren't alone either, in a way that encourages others to speak up, in a way that appeals to those who haven't come to the place where you are just yet. Because you know what? People are getting there every day, all the time, and it is thanks in part to stories like yours, stories like ours. Stories about progressive and inclusive Christians, because you know what? We exist. You know that's true. And so you are open. You are explicit about it. We are not alone. In fact, because God is good and gracious and always has more to offer, there are more and more of us all the time. So keep celebrating who you're called to be. Keep welcoming everyone, no exceptions, and keep telling your story because it says that we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Presidente, and I'm a queer-themed artist right here from Vancouver, BC. I'm thrilled to be invited to your Pi Day and to be a part of this. I wanted to share with you an original song that I wrote about being yourself. It's called Rainbow Reaction. I gave it a try, I didn't make it a part of the rainbow reaction. Give it all to the goal and the colors All lined up along with the basics If you find me, don't remind me Why I'm blindly staring at the screen Oh yeah ha! If you were wise, you cover the spectrum Go visit the same spot a lot and be sure to Try it all before you settle oh, My biggest flaw, procrastination A rainbow just doesn't appear without some Effort and motivation Come and find me Spend it all in one place You got to hide your heart To save your face Come and find me Don't remind me I'll be shining brightly Till the end 
Thank you so much, everybody. Please check out my music on Spotify, Matthew Presidente, or follow me on Instagram at Matty Pres. Last week, there was an alchemy of rain and sun right outside my window on Gambier Island. And it was that miracle that occurs, not very often, of a rainbow. A rainbow that emerged out of Howe Sound and kissed the North Shore Mountains. It's so appropriate to have the image of the rainbow in our mind this day as we gather together in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we remember the rainbow and give thanks. God of creation, we thank you for this good earth, for crocuses which poke color out of dark soil, for buds on the rhododendron that hold the promise of brilliant color, rainbow colors, blooming yellow, red, purple, all the marks of spring. We remember the rainbow and give thanks. God of the creatures, when the appearance of newborn fawns come out of the bush, it's the promise of new life once again. When the creatures with wings sing their songs and the whales of the sea breach with joy, the diversity of creation seems endless. In the midst of the creatures of creation, we remember the rainbow and give thanks. God of the ancestors, when we contemplate the rich tapestry of the human family, we remember the indigenous stewards of this land. We remember the descendants of slaves who with their music created a whole new way of contemplating the mysteries of faith and of courage and of hope. We remember those who resisted marginalization based on those whom they choose to love or upon their chosen gender. We remember those who fought for righteousness and justice. O oh God of the ancestors, we remember the rainbow and give thanks. God of the community, we are grateful for families, those given to us at birth and those chosen in life in which the dignity of each member is treasured. We grieve when families seek to suppress the diversity of humanity in their midst. And in that grieving, we offer up a new way of community, a chosen family in which marginalization, rejection and suppression will be no more. We pray in that spirit that this church family, this specific spirit United Church family might continue to be a place of safety which celebrates and nurtures the diversity of creation itself. We remember the rainbow and we give thanks. In the midst of our thanksgivings, we also offer prayers of intercession. On this Pi Sunday, we pray for those still living in fear and denial as a result of their sexual orientation or gender identification. We pray for all those who feel marginalized on the edge of community. May we continue to find ways to open our doors, open our arms, open our hearts to those on the edge of our community seeking for a way in. We pray this day for all those known to us and those not known to us, but known to you, who are lonely, those who are grieving, those who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. 
those for whom the pandemic has become almost unbearable. For all those crying out this day, we pray, O oh God. We ask that your loving arms might embrace all of humanity, and particularly for those who need that embrace in a special way at this time. And now in a moment of silence, we offer prayers for those whom we name before you. Hear our prayer. In our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers of intercession, we remember the rainbow and we give thanks. May all of these prayers be held in your embrace, we pray this day. And we offer this prayer in the name of the one who gathered us together in community, who welcomed in those on the margins, who gave dignity to all humanity, to all creaturely existence. In Jesus' name we pray, our loving God in heaven, holy is your name. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved siblings, as you go from the place that you are to the place that you'll be, and when you find yourself in between in places that don't feel like any place at all, may you keep faith that you are not alone, that the creator of the cosmos, the mother and father of us all, the spirit of love that connects all things is with you to comfort you to keep you, to guide and inspire you. Go in peace, for you are God's children, called to make out of this old world a new one. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh.